So one of the things we're going to do um, is actually go through here. And I know a lot of you would say, so this is obviously potatoes. This pokeberry, get that out of there because it's a weed. Wrong. So we are actually going to utilize that, their leaves, um, as wild edibles. We're going to go through everything in here and sort it out into different different piles. So we've got some purslane. We'll leave this little guy here because it's very high in omega-3 fatty acids. We've got some sorrel. Those will dry for a tea for when we have a headache. And we've got some chickweed that has seen better days. So we might just pull that out and also make a tea out of that chickweed for allergies and whatnot. And so one of the other things we could do, we're trying not to waste what the land has given us, is I have these big beautiful redbud trees. Now there is a nursery close by here that actually sells redbud saplings for about $110 a piece. So these little guys, now that they're wet, will easily come out of the ground. So we are gonna go through all of our beds and very carefully, all of our white oak, redbud, and maple tree um, saplings, we are going to carefully remove and repot so that they will be available for sale next year. And it's a really great alternative way to make a little bit of extra cash on your farm. And it's something that's basically free. Nature gives us, the land provides everything we need if we know how to look at it properly and listen to her. Now, these gardens may look a little bit unruly to you. So these are actually going to be seed gardens. Uh, the potatoes we will eat, but we will collect the botanical seeds from these potato fruit or potato fruits if the flowers do make them this year. They don't do it every year. And we will be collecting this fennel seed for subsequent gardens and to distribute to the community. So we actually supply a lot of community gardens in the area. So these beautiful sage flowers will end up supplying the community. And this is an inflorescence that is how the carrot flowers in its biennial schedule. Now we've got a lot of licorice here, goosefoot. The goosefoot we're actually gonna save as food. We have some in a bed in another area of the garden. And all this rocket arugula is going to go to seed or already has started to go to seed because we can see from just doing a quick inspection that we do have some fatties started out here. So basically we're gonna let these flowers run their course. You can eat these flowers, I love eating flowers. But we're going to let these guys, I got some dirt on my hands. We're going to actually let these guys run their course. They get very swollen and dry up. And the here's one that's a little bit farther along. So basically what we do is let them do their thing. They go into a big blue 55 gallon Tupperware container and that is what we use to clean our seeds. So we've got beets, these are shiojia beets. Those are the ones that look like a bullseye when you cut them open. So we're gonna let these, these beet flowers do their thing. And we've got some more carrots. So I am a huge propon proponent of polyculture. So we actually have some licorice growing in the corner um, and that is a perennial so it can live there and we'll gradually harvest that, harvest that. We do harvest some beet leaves off of these. There's a carrot that's ready to go and we have onions interplanted in here and somehow actually a potato made its way in here as well as some radishes. So we do this purposely. Nature does not present us with fields of just one particular cultivar. So what we are doing here is actually safeguarding these plants, safeguarding our own harvests by making sure that if a pestilence comes through or a virus that hurts some of our plants, we're gonna make sure that we do not lose all of one thing to that. And also polyculture actually helps a little bit with the bugs and confusing the bugs the bugs won't eat all of your garden if they've got one favorite thing to snack on. So you can see here I've got Blauerspecht, Kohlrabi, and they have, we do get organic gardening, so they have a couple of holes in there you can see. Um, but for the most part, it's really great and I wouldn't want to eat anything a bug wouldn't munch on anyway because a lot of times animals know when there is poison afoot and they are very intelligent. 
They will eat the good stuff. There's some little Mexican tarragon that's popped up and some sage in with our onions. And so today we are actually going to be spending some time going through this, cleaning all of this up, and then replanting. This is pretty sunny during the day. And we will be putting some peppers in place of some of these kohlrabi that I'm going to be picking today. So in this, these, this is also a perennial um, pot. It's really big. I know you can't really tell from the video, but it's got little baby asparagus starts in here. And these are actually gladiolas. Um, so the reason for the gladiolas, in case you're wondering, yes, it is for the pollinators, but it's not just for the pollinators. So these guys actually produce edible flowers. Gladiolas, I believe, are native to Africa, and you can don't need to cook the flowers. You can put them directly into salads, and wow, all of your party guests if you want to do something like that. Mm -hmm. 